Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to look at basic atomic structure. Now you may, may be wondering about this picture here, it has nothing to do with atoms. Well I chose this picture because atoms are kind of like nesting dolls. A lot of what you see around you is a mixture, and if you open up that mixture by zooming in, just like you would open up a nesting doll, inside you'll find something else. So if it's a mixture inside of that, you might find different compounds. Now if you zoomed in even more, and you opened up those compounds, you'd find individual elements, different uh, individual atoms. And if you zoomed in and opened up one of those atoms, you would find protons and neutrons and electrons. And if you opened up one of those subatomic particles, you'd find other types of subatomic particles that we're not going to learn about in this class, but there are many different types of subatomic particles inside of our protons and inside of our neutrons. So we could keep going and keep zooming in and finding all these different types of particles. So we have two learning goals for today, to describe the types of subatomic particles and to identify the number of subatomic particles in an element. So let's start off with the types of subatomic particles. The first one is the proton and we give this a symbol P, lowercase p, with a superscript plus sign. Now the reason we choose P is for proton and we chose the plus sign because the charge is positive. So a proton has a positive charge and it is located in the nucleus, which is in the center of the atom. Now we'll worry about the last column until we've got all three of our subatomic particles. The next one is the electron. The electron has the symbol lowercase e with the superscript negative, e for electron, and negative because it has a negative charge. Now the electrons are located in the orbits or the shells, so these are outside of the nucleus, so in space outside of the nucleus. And then neutrons have the symbol n, lowercase n with a superscript O, n for neutron, and O because it does not have any charge. It's not positive or negative, it's neutral. And these are located in the, nu in the nucleus alongside the proton, so in the very center of the atom. Now if we take a look at the relative mass, you can see protons and neutrons have relative mass of 1. That means they're approximately the same mass as each other. Electrons, on the other hand, are about 1 and 2,000th the size. So 1 over 1,850, that means it takes 1,850 electrons to have the exact same mass as just a single proton or a single neutron. So they're much, much less in mass. So these protons, neutrons, and electrons, what do they actually do inside the atom? Well, protons define which element it is. So if there's a certain number of protons, if there are three protons, we'll be dealing with lithium. And anytime there's three protons, the atom is going to be lithium. Electrons are involved in the reactions and they're involved in bonding with other elements. So they are sort of what makes an element actually do things. And then neutrons stabilize the nucleus. So they're inside the nucleus with the protons and they're making sure that the entire atom stays stable. Now we'll look at isotopes. Isotopes have to do with the number of neutrons that are inside of an, of an atom. Now we already said the number of protons is specific. So three protons would be lithium, one proton would be hydrogen and so on. Um, our number of electrons for a neutral atom will be equal to the number of protons, which we'll see in a little bit. The number of neutrons, however, can change. So for hydrogen, there could be no neutrons, there could be one neutron, or there could be two neutrons. So if we look at the picture there, we've got hydrogen with no neutrons, one with one, and then another picture with two. All of those are possibilities for hydrogen. They're all elements, they're all the element hydrogen, but they're all different isotopes of hydrogen. Another example would be magnesium or tin. They have many more different types of isotopes. For example, tin uh, looks like it's got about a dozen different isotopes. All of these are possibilities. Now those two pictures at the bottom actually show a special periodic table that shows the relative abundance of different isotopes. So for magnesium, there's one isotope that has 12 neutrons that's much more common than the one that has 13 or 14 neutrons. So these just show that there are different numbers of, or different isotopes and different amounts of each of those isotopes on Earth. 
So let's look at our atomic structure. We said inside the nucleus we have our protons and we have our neutrons. And when we draw diagrams, we'll actually write the number of protons and the number of neutrons there. Outside, we have the electron shells, and this is where we put all of our electrons. When we get to the video on drawing um, diagrams of atoms, you'll actually find out how many electrons and where we put them. Now let's look at our energy levels. This has to do with our electrons. In the electron shell that is closest to the nucleus, this has the lowest amount of energy. Then the next energy shell that's outside of that has more energy, next one outside of that more energy, and so on and so on until you get the furthest electron shell which has the highest energy. The electrons that are in that furthest outside shell are what we call in the valence shell. So the valence shell is the very outside shell and valence electrons are involved in bonding and they're involved in reactions. So let's see how to determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an atom. So we start off by looking at the little box that you would see for each of the elements on the periodic table. There are two important numbers there. One is the atomic number and the other is the atomic mass. The atomic number is a whole number, which means no decimals. The atomic mass typically has decimals. The atomic number tells us how many protons are inside of that element. It also tells us how many electrons are inside of that element. So in the case of fluorine, since the atomic number is 9, it has 9 protons and it has 9 electrons. Now to find the most common number of neutrons, we have to do a little bit of math. So it's the rounded atomic mass minus the atomic number. In this case, the atomic mass for fluorine is 19. If we round that, it stays at 19. If we take 19 and we subtract the atomic number 9, we end up with 10. That means 10 neutrons. So the most common isotope of fluorine will have 10 neutrons. So let's take another look at our learning goals. Can we describe the types of subatomic particles and identify the number of subatomic particles in an element? If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please rewatch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.